All right. Hello everyone. This is going to be a video explaining how the infinite map works. I'm going to try to the best of my ability to explain kind of what's going on behind the scenes and kind of explain like what exactly is happening in the background and what's going on with this map and how it looks infinite even though it technically really isn't. So let's take our map here. Let's pretend this is like a 2D representation of our map and we're going to make this. So let's pretend this is our source boundary. You can't go past this pretty much no matter what. Um, this is pretty much the limitations of Hammer and all that other stuff. I won't go into detail on why it's a limitation, but basically just know it's not possible to extend this bounds in any way. Let's pretend this is just a marked out area. It's kind of black square. It's just a marked out area. It doesn't mean anything yet, but we're going to pretend that it's there. And we have, of course, our little terrain. This is kind of our grassy, terrainy area, whatever you want to call it. So. You can like stand on it, and whatever. It's just it's just basic terrain. And let's take our Kleiner, and we're gonna spawn our Kleiner in here. And this is our player. Let's pretend this is player. This is this is um, this is Kleiner, right? He spawns in. He sees this map. He's like, wow, look at this map. He can go over here. He can go over here. He can go all around this amazing, incredible map. And unfortunately, this map isn't really infinite. It's kind of just a normal source map. And I've disabled the infinite map code. So if we go over here, you'll actually see that's exactly what happens. We can go past this black boundary here. And this blue boundary will hit it. We're going to hit this blue boundary. You can even see this pulse rifle like effect. It, it hits this boundary here. This is like our skybox, right? You can't go past this, no matter what you do. Now, if we go back here, and by the way, you can't physically go past the source boundary, but you can like render things by it. I'm just going to point that out there. Anyways, so let's go back here, right? And this is kind of just our really basic map. We can go to this blue boundary here and collide with it. Nothing really happens. It's just a basic, tiny little empty map. We can't go anywhere. We can't go over to that mountain. We can't go over to this mountain over here. It's just kind of a boring map. Now, what we're going to do to make this map infinite is we're going to add some portals. Just like this. Now these portals, the infinite map doesn't actually use portals, it uses a little more complicated technology, but whatever. But basically you just got to know that it's basically just a portal. So when Kleiner walks over here, he'll get teleported to this side. Um, just like that. So we put him through, he'll teleport over. Put him through again, he'll teleport over again. And he can walk like this, infinitely. He can go back and forth, infinitely. He'll just keep walking through, keep walking through, keep walking through. Now, what happens, um, or no, he can also go up too. Look at that, he can go up. He can, so he can go in any direction, basically for infinite. Now, the problem occurs is when our friend G-Man decides to join in in all the infinite fun. Now Kleiner's like, oh man, look at this amazing infinite map. And he, he decides to walk over here and he gets teleported and he's like, wait a minute. I walked over there, but but G-Man's right here. I teleported back. That That's not infinite. It's just a loopy map. That's not fun. So what we do is we'll set him back right there. And when he walks through our portal and he gets teleported over here, we're going to attach some data to him. We're going to make them red. Now, of course, in my infinite map, no, nothing is stored with color. That would be kind of weird. But this is just an example of kind of what's going on. So Kleiner is now red. And when he walks up to G-Man, nothing really happens. He's just, he's got this data attached to him. But we're not actually doing anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, all right, well, Kleiner's red and G-Man is white. Let's just make them not collide at all. So we're going to do this no collide thing, and now they can walk through each other. So Kleiner it pretends, right, he's white, walks through, now he's red, and he no longer collides with G-Man. Now, of course, G-Man kind of looks like he's right there, so what we're going to do is make it look like he's somewhere else. So if we go over here, so Kleiner walks through, yada yada, yada goes over here. And even though they're in the same location, from G-Man's perspective, Kleiner is over there, 
right? We're seeing through this portal. It looks like Kleiner is all the way over there. And from Kleiner's perspective, it looks like G-Man is over there. It looks like Kleiner has walked this direction away from G-Man. So even though they're occupied in the same location, what's happening is it kind of looks like they have walked almost twice the distance. It looks like, from G-Man's perspective, Kleiner is out here somewhere. But out here is past the source boundaries. So these two guys, even though they're occupied in the same location, it visually appears, we're making them visually appear like they're completely separate from each other. And I can actually enable some code that demonstrates this. So this is our, I've put kind of a wireframe box around everything. So this is kind of like a prop or whatever. And uh, a wireframe is basically just kind of like a white outline or whatever. And we've kind of like put a box over everything. And let me en enable the infinite map code real quick so I can actually teleport. All right, there we go. So when we go over here, and we pass this black boundary, we're, we're effectively going through our portal, we get teleported to the other side. And these props, these wireframe props now, we've teleported, and let's pretend we're looking at it this way, so these props here, they look like they're on the right of us, and when we go over here, we get teleported, and now it looks like they're on the left of us. So these props are actually in this location here, but I've just made it so I don't collide with anything. So this is kind of the, this is the base plate. So if I look over here, that's the base plate right there. And this cube here this is our cube over there. I can go back and I can even make this thing spin. So now it's like spinning with a little thruster. And I can go over here and this guy is still spinning. I can walk in him and nothing happens because I've made it so I don't collide with anything that isn't in my cell, kind of. And this is true for literally any of these cells. So if I go up like a couple, like a couple of little chunks or whatever, and we're going to call them cells, chunks, whatever you want to call them, these props up here, they're still here. They're still in this area. This cube right here is still rotating in this area. We just aren't colliding with him. Right? So we can go back. And now that I'm in the same area as this cube, I can walk on it. So that's pretty much basically how the infinite map works, is it's just teleporting from one side to the other and then having a really seamless um, way to render these objects over there, even though they're technically over here in the same location. So this this little, I don't know if any of you noticed or uh, cared, but this little red sphere here is the origin of the map. Like, if I were to respawn, I would respawn here. We can go over here. And this, this little it's, it's still here. This is still the origin of the map. So I can go anywhere. And again, still here. And go back. So yeah, that's pretty much basically, super as basically as I can get it, uh, explanation of how the infinite map works. Uh, I apologize if you kind of didn't understand what's going on. I tried to the best of my ability. But, and of course, it's actually a little more complicated than that, uh, but that's basically what it really just dumbs down to, is teleporting from that side to the other side. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Of course, it's a little more complicated, uh, as explained, but, you know, I can't, I can't really explain it all without having, like, an hour-long video explaining kind of what's going on behind the scenes. I mean, I haven't even explained the terrain. Like, the terrain is different. Like, I collide with different terrain over here than I do over here. Like, I don't, there's no terrain here. Like, this box here, oh, uh, this box here is colliding with the terrain, what it looks like down there, and I can go through it. So yeah, it's it's pretty weird, um, kind of, oh, sorry, I'm water. It's kind of weird how it works, but anyways, that's pretty much the super basic explanation. Um, Hopefully, I will see you guys in a different video.